Hello folks, Dom Lawson here, um, having a delicious uh, coffee, as I tend to do. Mm. Wonderful, I can't recommend coffee highly enough. In fact, I should do a um, iron sandwich just on coffee, as, uh, as a fine drink for upstanding adults. Um, <clears throat> right, today, it's time for another exciting iron sandwich thing, where I sit here talking into my laptop without any kind of planning or thought. Um, <clears throat> you've probably, unless you've been living under a rock, or unless you're one of those ludicrous people that pretends that they're not aware of what's going on in pop culture because I only listen to Dark Throne on cassette, um, you'll probably be aware that this is a thing. Baby metal. Baby metal from Japan. Um, now, I've been bashing on about them for a while on Twitter and all the rest of it. Um, but uh, obviously, <laughs> they're, uh, it, it's... It's a strange phenomenon, is what it is. Um, they're from Japan. Uh, if you don't know anything about them, I'll just give you a quick pricey. It's basically um, a heavy metal band fronted by three teenage uh, kind of pop singers from Japan, really. Um, female pop singers. Uh, and what can I say? I'm going to review this album because I, I think you know that, that a lot of people will have seen them now, or evidently, at Sonosphere, uh, I thought it was one of the best things of the entire weekend, I've got to be honest with you, I thought it was fantastic, and I've never seen quite so many happy looking metalheads in my life really, um, but anyway, I'll get, I'll get to the, uh, the happiness side of things later, but uh, this is the album, it's not been officially released in the UK on compact disc, you can see that I've been carrying mine around in the car quite a lot because it's fucked. Um, the CD still works though, which is nice. Uh, it's not available uh, on CD here. You can buy it, obviously, because I've got it. I bought it from, I think I got it imported from Taiwan and it cost me about 20 quid. Worth every penny though. Um, but the album is available on iTunes and Spotify and all that kind of stuff that I don't wish to understand. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's a remarkable record. I mean, I think it came out, I mean, it was released earlier this year in Japan. Um, it's one of those things. It's a, it's a strange. It's a strange one. Um, I always think that you know you can judge a band on many things on their on their music, of course, on their haircuts, always good, um, and also on who doesn't like them. <laughs> I always think it's worth judging people on who doesn't like them. And uh, there've been some very odd objections to baby metal I, I've seen online anyway I mean I know online is probably the worst place to actually discuss anything because if you talk to people in real life they say relatively sensible things a lot of the time but if you ask them online they just come out with absolute bullshit um, or you know posturing nonsense but anyway I totally if you've listened to baby metal and you don't like them it's fine I'm not having a pop at all uh, you know you're not you don't have to like the same things as me uh, well you should obviously if you want to be a cool person but um no, not really. Actually, that's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, the, the objections seem to be one: one that it's a manufactured band. Now, manufactured—that's the the one of two that I shall mention. Uh, yes, they are a manufactured band. I, I interviewed the um, the manager or the the mastermind behind the whole thing, um, a guy called Kai Kobayashi, um, last week, um, and. Yes, it's a it's a band that's been put together. You know, like the, these girls didn't form a metal band; they were picked to to front this metal band. Um, and also, you know, uh, it, it's obviously, you know, um, the guys in the the guys who play the actual instruments are amazing session musicians. If you saw them at Sonosphere, they were pretty incredible and a pretty amazing metal band, really. Um, but anyway, that is is the fact that something's manufactured. Does that necessarily make it? Crap. No, I don't think so. I mean, yes, we, you know, we can all jump up and down and go, oh, we really hate One Direction or, or whatever. Um, but I, I don't really care if something's manufactured or not. If it's good, it's good. And um, the, the, the fundamental difference here is that in Japan, uh, you know, culturally, their attitude towards manufactured pop and, and things like that is completely different from ours. We, we all sit around going, oh, I hate Simon Cowell. Let's vote for, you know, prosthetic. Uh, what's that band called? No, prostitute disfigurement to be number one this Christmas instead of whoever wins X Factor. You know, that's all well and good, although it's boring now, obviously. Um, but the truth is that, you know, if the music's good, I don't really care where it's come from. I'm not bothered if it was put together by some producers and then, uh, 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 you know, three teenage Japanese girls were asked to sing on it. I'm not really bothered. Who cares? If it's good, it's good. Um, and Baby Metal is not just good, it's fucking brilliant. Um, 
perhaps beyond that though, the the the, the criticism that it seems to keep up that I've seen quite a few times is oh, oh there's you know, uh, isn't it a bit dubious? You know why? Ooh, you know why, why do you want to have your picture taken with three Japanese girls? You know mm, Operation Utery, Rolf Harris. Um, I just think you know. One baby metal aren't sexualized at all. I've not seen any pictures of the girls with you know with much flesh showing. The the videos aren't exactly um, soft porn by any you know sensible definition of the term. And um, frankly, if the first thing that you think of when you see three te teenage Japanese girls is underage sex, and I think it's you that's got the problem, uh, not me. So uh, I just think it's fun. You know, and I think that's the thing with this. I, I hear a lot of people bashing on about, you know, uh, you know, everyone should be open-minded and listen to, every, you know, whatever they like, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, we should all like pop music and stuff. And it's like, you know, I understand why a lot of metalheads don't like pop music. You know, it does seem to be culturally, certainly, in opposition to, to everything that metal stands for sometimes, you know. And um, I totally get it if people don't like baby metal. But, <laughs> you know, it's not... Um, it's not something that you should necessarily have to listen to. But I think, uh, on a musical level, if you ignore the three girls, it's fucking credible. You know, it's totally credible. And and metal-wise, it's it's bang up to date. The production is amazing. Um, it's it's been done brilliantly. There's something about it that um, that I think you know, kind of kind of bypasses the whole notion of it being a, a cynical manufactured exercise. I mean, I don't think it one, I don't think, having spoken to the guy that, that came up with the idea, it, honestly, it's not cynical. You know, I, I think the Japanese view these things very differently. Um, he's not gone, oh, I think I'll make vast amounts of money. If he was going to do that, I don't think he would have put together a metal band, for one. Um, it's fairly obvious, you know, like metal, you know, some metal bands make a lot of money, but not many these days. Um, but also, you know, it's it, there's something utterly joyful about this about this record, and there's something utterly joyful about seeing them live. If you've seen them live, I mean, I, I wish I'd been at their show at the forum because if you've seen the the pictures of them, um, they they completely sold out, including the balcony show at the forum in London last week. Um, you'll know that there's an awful lot of people there having an absolutely fucking amazing time, and it wasn't just you know people that are massively into Japanese culture. It wasn't just pop fans. It wasn't you know it was there was a lot of metalheads there. There were a lot of black t-shirts, you know. And that was the great thing about Sonosphere was seeing all these people in Metallica and Maiden shirts, you know, and um, just going absolutely berserk for these three girls who, who frankly, couldn't believe it. I mean, they, you've never seen so much kind of, you you know, grinning and, <laughs> you know, they, they were obviously having the time of their lives and probably were quite nervous coming out in front of a field full of Metallica fans, you know, really. Um, um, and, the, you know, one brilliant thing about Baby Metal is that their drummer managed to stay on his seat for the entire set. But there you go. Um... So yeah, the album is the important thing anyway. Like I say, I'm pretty certain this will get an official release um, in the UK very shortly. Um, it's it's just a wonderful thing. I mean, the, pro the problem I have, partly, is that I don't have all the English versions of the titles. Like As you can probably see here, most of them are written in Japanese, but I, I have got some kind of approximations of the titles anyway. It starts with the, th the track, first track that they played at... Um, uh, Sonosphere, which is called Baby Metal Death, which is like their intro, which kind of spells out the word baby metal with a load of thunderous kind of uh, melodic death metal riffs going on. It's bonk it, it actually bonkers. Um, and then, um, I mean, you will probably have seen the videos for some of these songs, but I'm just going to pick out some of, some of my favourites. Um, Gimme Choco, everybody loves that, don't they? I mean, how, how can you not love that? I don't get it. It seems weird to me. It seems weird to me that people, some of the objections I've seen to, you know, the idea that mixing pop and metal doesn't work or that somehow it's, um, uh, somehow there's something awful about this that there isn't about other bands mixing things together. You know, like, I mean, I, I can't, as you know, I, <laughs> if you've watched any of these things, I can't stand that band issues. I think they're fucking dreadful. Um, and they're trying to mix kind of modern pop and R&B with metal. Um, a very kind of stylized version of modern metal, certainly. But, but for me, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because the singer's awful and the lyrics are dreadful and and it's just a really kind of it's the kind of pop music that I really don't like. But then if you do like that kind of pop music, then you'll probably like it. I get that, you know. With this, it's very much Japanese pop music is is what's been put on top of the riffs, and it's I just think it's done brilliantly. It's not done with a you know a kind of you know a knowing wink to the pop audience it's a metal record um just with pop hooks on it and if you've got a problem with catchy sing-along hooks then you should really put you know stop listening to iron maiden really because that's what they do as well um gimme choco is the one the video that kind of flew around the internet that that's brilliant that's an just a, an awesome song um which appears to be about 
being given chocolate, which is a, a reasonable subject for a song, I would say. Uh, so that that was one of their singles. Uh, that's a fairly straightforward one for them. Then there's this amazing track called Line. I think it's called Line. Um, that, that appears to be what they're singing. Don't know what it means. Sorry. Um, but it's, it's fabulous. If you can see the video for this, again, it's a thunderous... Uh, metal tune but with kind of rave synths over the top and like a real kind of you know quirky um, almost cheesy kind of pop kind of vibe to it and then uh, halfway through it suddenly descends into this kind of crunk hip hop breakdown which is <laughs> which is just mental and it, and it works I don't know why it shouldn't work but it does there's another track that I particularly adore called uh, I think it's called what it says on here if this is wrong I apologise profusely to anybody that sp speaks Japanese but it says four no uta I don't know what that means, uh, but it's it kind of goes dun dun da da dun da 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 dun oi oi a lot, which is always good because that reminds me of the punk records that I grew up listening to. Um, but uh, then it's thunderous metal, and then uh, about two thirds of the way through the song, it breaks down down to kind of summery pop reggae for about fifteen seconds, um, with the girls doing their kind of squeaky voice thing over the top. It's just brilliant, and then it kicks off into metal again. Um, I personally, I mean, I tell you, like I said, I get why anybody wouldn't like it. Um, that's fine, don't listen to it, and fuck off. But really, this is just such a, it's such a joyful record. It's like, it's so much fun. It's so much, it's so, in fact, so unsullied by cynicism in many ways. You know, like, it's it just, there's so much humour in the in the, uh, in the the arrangements on the record. There's so many, you know, clever little touches that make you know that, you know, they real, the, the guys that are behind this, know that it's supposed to be fun and entertainment. It's not, you know, they're not desperately trying to tap into some huge pop audience. They're trying to create something new that kind of draws in people that are, you know, kind of like-minded. And I think, it, you know, for me, it works brilliantly. And I have listened to this a lot. And my 11-year-old daughter loves it as well. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, there's the pop audience right there. Um, I, I get, you know, obviously my daughter's been brought up with having to listen to daddy's music in the car. So, you know, if I put on Cannibal Corpse, she doesn't bat an eyelid. Most of her friends would probably start crying. But, you know, so perhaps my daughter isn't the average 11-year-old pop fan. But even so, you know, she likes Ed Sheeran. So, you know, I can't win, really. Um, another track that I think is absolutely phenomenal is the final track on the album, which, let me see, how do I say this? Ijima Dharma Zetai. It's six minutes long. It's epic. It's It's... Borders on power metal, to be honest with you. Um, it's it's got that kind of gloriously overblown power metal feel to it. It's almost Dragon Forcey in places with the the soloing and and some of the the interplay between the lead guitars. Um, it's got a an absolute killer hook for a chorus. No idea what they're singing about, but it's just it's so brilliantly done. It sounds like a million dollars, which is probably what was spent on it. But um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, there's just something about it that I find really uplifting. Um, there's another track called Headbang, and there's a video for that online, which uh, is, again, it's basically a power metal tune, but sung by by teenage Japanese girls. I just, you know, it, it, if it had come from anywhere but Japan, you might think, well, I'm not sure what's going on here, but the Japanese just have a, a very different approach to everything, and so much of their heavy music, you know, whether it's, whether it's bands like Psy or... Um, you know, bands like Boredoms or Melt Banana or any of that kind of stuff. It's just out there. You know, they, they might even be attempting to do something normal, but they, they their view of it is entirely different, and it just goes off on one, and it's mental. Um, yeah, so, you know, those tracks, fantastic. Uh, there was another track that I wanted to mention. Sorry, I'm just really disorganised, as usual. Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, can't remember which one it is. But, yeah, there's another track that's just... I mean, it's just flat out death metal. I mean, you know, like there's a breakdown in the middle with lots of growls and, and all the rest of it, which I suspect aren't the teenage girls. Um, but it's just, I don't know, it's genuinely heavy. The songs are brilliantly written. The arrangements are really clever. Um, the whole thing is produced, it's just immaculate, you know, and, and um, above and beyond everything else, it's incredibly good fun. Now, I think it's one of those things where, you know, it might be a novelty and it might be a flash in the pan and you know in, in six months time nobody will give a shit but I've got to be honest the way they went down at Sonosphere in front of a fairly die hard metal audience says it all I think there's a real I think there's legs on this thing you know and I think um, I think people will be once the album's released and people actually get hold of it I think um, there's substance behind the, the daft idea and all the stuff about the, the fox god and, you know, the metal resistance and all that. You know, it's just silly, but it's fun, you know. And uh, even a miserable fucker like me can, 
you know, I, I, honestly, I was grinning all the way through their set at Sonosphere, and it, and it was just so it was euphoric, you know, and it was lovely to see something that that does kind of challenge the idea of what metal is, and and you know, does potentially get the get people's backs up. So it's not metal, it's pop, you know, and it's like yeah. I quite like pop music. I'll be honest. There's a lot of pop music I like, but I, you know, culturally, I, you know, I feel an affinity with metal. I identify myself as a metal fan or a metalhead. Um, but this doesn't offend me on any level. I just think it's brilliant. And, and I met the girls, and uh, they're having the time of their lives. You know, <laughs> I don't, what's not to like, really? You know, and uh, the band are killer. I don't know. It's just a great record, anyway. I, I thoroughly recommend it. You can get it on import. Um, you know, from the usual online retailers, and it'll probably cost you around 20 quid to get hold of the CD, but I suspect that some sensible label will pick this up and put it out soon. Uh, if not, it's available on iTunes, you can hear it on Spotify, there's loads of videos on YouTube and all that kind of stuff, there's probably some stuff on the Metal Hammer site. Um, I think maybe Metal are fucking brilliant, and uh, I think, you know, the sneering and all the rest of it is just, you know, in many cases, just disgustingly hypocritical but but for the most part it's just oh you know oh god oh, oh, pop music oh, well you know I think we're beyond that aren't we really um, you know you, you're perfectly welcome to continue to listen to Dark Throne on cassette but just get baby metal on cassette as well to go with it that's my advice so uh, I've just been rambling haven't I so standard Dom um, yeah so there you go that's uh, me talking about the baby metal album thrilling stuff uh, <coughs> oh dear doesn't sound good does it uh, I'll, I'll uh, be doing another one of these soon but yeah Remember the name, they're going to be massive. They're supporting Lady Gaga later this year in the States. Imagine the horrified faces of the fans. I think it's going to be brilliant. Uh, right, that's your lot. Cheers. Thanks for watching this bollocks, and uh, I'll see you again for the next one. Way!